A couple of years ago, if you compared Mazda to BMW, maybe everyone would have made fun of you and probably also laughed at Mazda. But then things changed. The CX-60 came and we compared it, for example, against the BMW X3. And people have been changing from premium manufacturers to Mazda with their new big SUV lineup. This year now is the CX-80, the bigger model that is, for example, size-wise attacking the BMW X5, only that it's doing that for approximately half the price. What do we get from that? How premium is the CX-80? And how does it relate with CX-60 and CX-80 in Europe and CX-70 and CX-90 in the Northern American market. What's the logic behind it? We're going to tell you all about it. Here is Thomas Naudigefuhl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go, front of the CX-80. Here, vertical fins, high gloss black, a really strong stance. So from the outside, it already screams, hey, I want to be a premium SUV. Lamps, LED standard, optional, a matrix LED or included in higher trims. And also two new colors in here. This one is Artisan Red. It's a rather darker red color. You maybe know the Soul Red Crystal, which is a brighter, screaming out red color. This one here, a little bit darker nuance, but still has this additional layer that it has this shiny effect. You can see here where sometimes some you know, brighter light is there. It really goes well in the sun. Even better than uh, Leah's making fun of me now. Leia and Leah. Ah, Leia and Leah. Okay, okay, gotcha. Leia and Leah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm really into these details, and then sometimes she thinks that, ah, you know, this car nerd again. Here, the length of the CX80. Now it gets really interesting. This is here, five meters or 197 inches. And that means it's about 25 centimeters or 10 inches longer than the CX-60 that is offered on the European market. So a notable size difference. The CX-70 or 90, which are offered in Northern America, they are even 10 centimeters or four inches longer. But the basic difference is the higher numbers, 90 and 80 are the seven seaters, and the 60 and 70 are the five seaters. Just, I think this one here is making more sense here in Europe because there you have a differentiation. Okay, the 60 is the shorter model, the 80 is the longer one, clearly. In the Northern American market, there's no length difference between 70 and 90. People think like, why? You just delayed the third seating row? Yeah, I think so. In this case, the European strategy makes more sense. The American model is a little bit wider though. That's also another difference. Wheels here, standard 20 inch. So massive design, definitely large size. And you can see this is also the higher trim because it has painted wheel arches. So the base trim, which is called exclusive here, has these matte wheel arches and matte black plastic cladding. You can see it here. Like the CX-90 uh, we have recently seen in Vegas when we were there for the CS and you know, covering all the car, sh car stuff there. Then you also have here, once again, the black plastic cladding. And the models also differentiate here a little bit in the rear window graphic. Double wishbone in the front, multi-link rear suspension. However, they do not offer adaptive suspension, nor air suspension. This is one of the differences if you compare it to the German premium manufacturers. And we already have the entry prices for this one here. So a German example price would be at 55,000 euros for the plug-in hybrid drivetrain, a couple of thousand euros more, like 59,000 euros for the uh, six-cylinder diesel. And then, for example, X5 plug-in hybrid at the same size starts at around 100,000 euros with extra equipment even more. So indeed, this is half the price of a BMW X5. From the visual part, you can say, hey, maybe I even prefer the Mazda uh, thing here. And if you compare the CX-60, they're the smaller model. Here, the CX-80 has no fake exhaust graphics at all. I really applaud the designers for that. I don't like fake exhaust graphics. The real exhaust is underneath. And then it's a more clean, or cleaner design here in the lower part. I like that. And the horizontal stress here of the tail lamps as well. E-Sky Active PF says the badge here in the rear. Let's take a look there in the front. Oh, we have hydraulic struts here. That's nice. And a 2.5 liter four-cylinder plug-in hybrid. We revise still from that all-wheel drive in all the versions. This one here, the plug-in hybrid drivetrain, 330 horsepower system output and 6.8 seconds in the acceleration figure. The net capacity of the battery is around 14.5 kilowatt hours. 
it's not that large and also 7.2 kilowatt AC charging max. So all the electric facts like size of the battery, recharging and so on, really not top of the game. So they are not that competitive in the plug-in hybrid drive train system. However, the price is way lower and you can still have these taxation benefits if you have a company car and also use it for private use. Um, in Germany and also in some other European countries. So that this can still make sense because you're still below this 50 grams of CO2 limit in the total output. Alternative would be the six cylinder, the diesel, 3.3 liter six cylinder diesel, around 250 horsepower, 8.4 seconds in the acceleration figure. We have driven that one actually in the CX60 already and we could score some six liters on 100 kilometers, so actually a very decent consumption. On the US market for the CX90 and 70, you also get a 3.3 liter turbo petrol engine in two different horsepower specs. This here is one of the other exclusive new colors. It's called melting copper. So it's not molten copper, so it's melting in this moment, obviously, you know, see, um, yeah. also with a nice Nuances, and then yeah, if you compare it like this, could also look cool, right? So uh, as soon as we can drive the vehicle, oh, Leah loves it. Yeah, because it has this, you know, like apple rose gold appearance a little bit, you know. Uh, yeah, the girls love it, I think. But maybe also the guys. So what do you think here? Melting copper or artisan red for today? Of course, more are available also. Ooh. Look at that. Nice work here with the turning indicators in the front and also has this pulsing heartbeat effect. Wait a minute, didn't the X5 have that as well? But only after the facelift that came after the CX60 was launched, I think. Hmm. And you also see that pulsing scheme here at the side mirrors. Hmm, it's also interesting. Looks pretty cool, I think. I mean, it does add some special effect. Hmm. But some also say that they actually don't like it and want to have it more straightforward as for the indicator design. What's your take? Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> I think this wouldn't have gone through the BMW design department for this rear turning indicator. I think just a little bit too small. And I mean, even when you go a little bit far away, it's not even I mean, that visible. Here now as a hazard light, but when it just have on one side, I think this trend, um, I think Tesla Model 3 started it really, that it was so tiny. Meanwhile, with the Tesla Model 3 Highland, it's, you know, more visible again. But yeah, these tiny rear indicators, I think also a safety thing, right? The car key itself is not that much premium alike, though, I have to say. Door closing sound. That is actually nice and proper, like that. And then inside of the doors here, it is somewhat soft touch and has a nice structure. This trim also comes with a nice, bright decor element in wood, this real wood, and also this fabric here. Yeah, I really like that. However, here the inside door pocket is not covered, you know, from felt on the inside. That's, you know, something you could maybe add. Then this interior here with control stitches on the inside in white, real buttons at the steering wheel, that's cool. They also give you a good premium feedback here, right? So for the cruise control, for example, 12.3 inch digital instruments, 12.3 inch infotainment screen, soon more than that. Also soft touch here on top of the dashboard and some nice fabric applications here. Seats as the base seats would start actually from fabric in Europe in the exclusive line or CX-90 or 70 get a full leatherette that would almost look the same. This one here however optional animal skin because Mazda so far is not offering animal skin alternatives in higher trims. I already talked to the developers about that and they want to, um, you know, actually, you know, in improve that situation. They showed it with the MX-30 already, but not yet with the volume models. Then here with 189, 602, some headroom left here above my head. This here optionally equipped with the panoramic roof. You can also open that. The mechanism itself is quite loud actually, and also the opening is not that wide. However, the cool thing to me is that even if you pick a base trim, most of the stuff that is really necessary is already in the equipment and that can easily make you like, like a purchase where you say like, hey, I really go for a base trim. And then I think it also makes sense. 
if you pay some more extras and so on, you're getting closer to a higher premium price. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Here, I think this vehicle makes sense when you go an entry level price and really keep the price low that you can say, hey, I save so much money in comparison to a premium manufacturer and still get large vehicle and also premium features. I mean, look at that here in the interior, just the, the visual part here with the covering right here. And also it is clean, yet at the same time, I have haptic interface. So here the climate unit, for example, I can click that easily. I don't have to finger around in the infotainment system. I can open this one here. It gives a nice smooth feedback here with the adaptive cup holders, for example. You also have a real shifting lever here. Not sure if I'm the biggest fan of that because you know you have to go in this step way for that. But here is also the control unit for the infotainment system with this nice rattling sound, I would call that way. Also manual volume input. So here they said, hey, we want still a manual interface for that vehicle and you can just applaud them for that while more and more manufacturers go away from that. Well, Volkswagen goes back to that again because they saw that it's not the right direction here. Felt covering and inside two USB-C chargers and also listen to that. There's also a nice sound here when I open or close that. Digital instruments, easy and clear with analog setup. You also have a stand-up head-up display. Infotainment system, you control from below because the master system itself does not react to touch. Just if you have Apple CarPlay Android Auto connected, then it's not only from below, but you can also actually control it via touch. So this is then possible like this. Also while driving is possible when you have activated that function. So do you like this interior better or the one from the BMW X5? Tell me in the comments. Here's steering wheel, by the way, easily. It's quite loud, the electric motor, but it's very well adjustable in and out, up and down. Rear compartment, first of all, it's very exciting. Here, look at that, the doors open almost 90 degrees. So that's an easy access then. And also we have a nice structure here and not too hard pack, like I would say a little soft touch in the rear. And here we have a manual shade for the rear. There we go. And also this wooden inlet and this trim and the nice bright fabric. Door pockets here not covered from the inside. And what about the rear door closing sound? Hmm, that's actually quite decent. So the rear doors sometimes were not that good with master from the sound. Also here the yeah, they also worked on that one actually, because before that, that was sounding sometimes a little bit weird, but that's actually cool. This is here the captain seats set up. So you have basically three choices. This is here, captain seats. So two seats in the second row and this middle console here. Second setup would be without the middle console that you can go through the middle to the third seating row. And the third setup would be you have a through bench and then go from a six seater to a seven seater. Actually, it's the other way around. The seven seater is the standard. And then you can optionally go for these captain seats here. Um, yeah, but whatever you prefer. You can also adjust here the back part of the seat like this. And you can also slide it forward or backward. And comfort here with the captain seats is good. Headroom in the rear. Well, it gets close. Uh, 189, six foot two. Really close with the head. This one equipped with the panoramic roof though. The base version exclusive line would not have the panoramic roof so um yeah if that's you know um, if you need it or not i can also show more from the middle console of course here it does limit you a little bit it is on you know on the one hand an exclusive trim but if you use it for the family maybe not the best solution because the kids love just to enter here and go through the back i'll soon show you the other access route and then here it's like a middle console in the front one also in the rear with nice opening and closing sounds, more space underneath. Adaptive cup holders here, they're actually very nice. And then you have USB-C chargers and a proper rear climate unit. Oh, with nice ticking sounds, listen to that. I love that. And also here when the engine is running, you can have seat cooling and seat heating for the rear. And then there's also, yeah, like, not sure if it has a trash bin or something. Um, yeah, for whatever you want to use it. Yeah, but actually decent comfort. You sit relatively high, so it's actually good for child seats. Here have the isofix also um, at the sides. Well, and then I would say, let's access the third seating row because here in the top, you can 
yeah, that's again with the middle console here. <laughs> Going back and forth, forth is not that easy then. So here we go. That's upper lever. That was not sounding so nicely. Let's try that again. That's maybe just in the back position. Ah, yeah, when, when you pull a little bit more up, you know, quicker, then it's actually easy. So there we go. Yeah, I mean, it's somewhat limited when you have a tall driver. And then here, you want to take a look may, maybe there. So at the moment they are down, I can just manually push them up, up like this. Head restraint as well. And then let's see how much space can I still get there. I mean, I could push the seats a little bit forward though, but you see that the third seating row, pushing that one up. Yeah, you already get the picture when the seats are all the way back, all the way back here, there's no chance. Headroom wise is actually quite okay, that, that works. And yeah, you see here also for my, you know, for my angle from the legs. Let's see how far I can push that one back. So that would work actually for my knees. But then you see there's hardly any space in the front. So I wouldn't say it's tall L proof in the rear. Um, yeah, but I mean, for the situations like, hey, you know, short trip or something, there's no isofix here at the third seating row though, so no additional child seats. I think that would be this, this use case for the children are old enough or big enough not to need, you know, like the real large child seats anymore. But then again, they're not as tall as me. So something in between, that would be the use case here. Well, and since you guys ask, when Leah is sitting in the rear seat, yes, she has a little bit more leg room because she's not as tall as me. She's not small at all, but still a more realistic value maybe from her than from me. You know what this means when you are a subscriber of our channel. It's the fight of the trunk capacity. <laughs> 690 up to 1,990 up to 1,970 liter, and that is even a little bit rounded because I don't want to go into like one or two liter figures. It's just too uh, too messed up. Then let's see. Ah, yeah, we can push it up a little bit further. If you, by the way, want to secure a certain position, you just hold this closing button. Beep beep beep. There we go, and then it saves the position. For example, if you have a basement garage that's like ending here. You can leave it in that position, yeah, but that it doesn't, you know, touch the, the roof, uh, like the, 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 the ceiling of the basement garage from the inside. But then again, you have to be aware that you can scratch your head then as well. This is then here, third seating row. The CX-60 does not have that. And even behind that one, still have some space left here. I mean, like 47 centimeters or 18 inches. Put this one here up. You could also store then the charging cable here for the plug-in And this is also the additional cover. Well, very well hidden underneath. Here is also a real power socket in the rear. Also activated right here. AC 1500 watt. Whoa. Oh, now the electric system even goes on here. Like, interesting. Wow, that is putting the car under some stress, obviously. <laughs> and then we can fold down the seats here. We have to pull these straps. There we go. Manual system. Also here folds in the head restraint. Easy. And then to the seats in the second seating row is about 150 millimeters or 45 inches and important for all our doggo owners there we go with 74 centimeters or 29 inches and we can also fold these the captain seats here and let's put a suitcase in here that you can have a you know dimension you know sample here that's actually cool here now to the seats as we're driving in the front like two meters or 79 78 inches so that's indeed full length. <laughs> of course, other competitors would also be a Škoda Kodiak in a seven-seater trim. Also, if you think about the Hyundai and Kia competitors. But yeah, I mean, it also works as a premium manufacturer substitute if you especially take into account that it's way lower in the price. And we did that comparison, Mazda CX-60 against BMW X3. And of course, if you want to check out the direct premium competitor, the X5, check it out right now.